All right. So in this kind of final part, we're going to learn how to use the recording function up here to make an arrangement with our beats and then export so that we are able to have something to show and then we can kind of move our beats around a little bit. This is going to be something we're going to go through a lot. So um, don't worry, there's a lot to this section, but we're just going to start very simple today. So I'm going to show you two ways that we can get our beats to the arrangement section. In order to export a song, if you will, we do need to use this um, arrangement section. It's just going to be very helpful. So let's go ahead and listen to our beats. So we have this first section. We have a beat in three, four. Again, because I'm just playing these and I'm not actually deactivating, they're all playing at the same time. So I need to remember to hit this clip stop button. All right, so I've got some nice beats. So one thing I can do is I can actually hold this beat down and since I know it's here, I can um, just drag it. So I'm holding my mouse down, and I press tab to get to the arrangement view. Now, in order to do this, you do have to use that hotkey for tab. Um, because we are playing these clips in our session view, they're going to be deactivated right now because you don't want both clips to be playing at the same time. It gets a little confusing. So there are... Um, they are disabled right now. So in order to enable and hear this, and we can see here now, we have our timing down here. We have the amount of um, sort of bars in 4-4. And I can see that every time I have this small little uh, black divot, that is going to be one of the loops. And I can see how many times it repeats. This is going to be very helpful as we get our composition. So that's the first way. And that's definitely an easy way to do this. So I just click. I hold this down. Another way that we can get our beats in is that I can actually record. And our beats will record onto the arrangement. So we use this arrangement record button. The only thing we want to make sure, though, is that so we have this timing scheme. This is our arrangement position in time. So we just have to be careful because if I'm if I'm clicked maybe here at six and then I go to record, oh, luckily we do have an, an automatic start. But um, depending on different factors, you can have this set to a specific point. And then when I go to record, it's going to record there. But Ours seems to be going back to the beginning. But as a general rule, if you just press stop, um, no matter where you are, it will get you back to your beginning, which is the 1111. Um, also, just in this sort of arrangement view, I can see, I can, uh, if, as long as I have this little speaker, this will play wherever. Um, our metronome is on. It's not going to actually record the metronome. We just sort of use it to help us guide our own time. So the metronome will not be in your arrangement, um, just to make that clear. But I like to have it because it helps me kind of determine if I'm going to do this live input. So I'll show you. So when I do this, I want to start with a beat um, already, uh, already selected. Because as soon as I hit record, it's going to start recording into the arrangement view. So this is kind of more like, I guess this was like if you were to musically play it and you know you know what you want to hear by playing these different beats. So let's just go ahead and arrange these. So I'm going to be using the master um, rather than just hitting the clips because I don't want the clips to all be playing at the same time. And since I'm just using my mouse, um, if I click to this one, I have to stop this one. And so I'm just going to be playing them from the master because it plays whatever is on this scene, which is great for us. So I'm going to hit record. And right now, I can see on my metronome, I'm going to have 
a count in of one bar, that means that I'm going to get one bar before it actually starts recording. So that will give me time to get ready. I could turn that off, but then again, I want, I want that time. So I'm going to get my beat ready. So it's ready to go and make sure I'm at one, 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 and let's get started here. Here comes our fill. Okay, so I recorded some stuff. Not everything is where I want it to be, but we can change that. And we will get further into this, but I just wanted to show you this is a, a nice way. So all these are these patterns that I recorded and I can go in here now and I can actually just edit. So, so right here in my beat two, I actually wanted this three, four to beat to come in right there. So I can just sort of drag things around and delete small sections. Let's have this come here. I don't want this impulse. Let's have this fill here. And then we'll end with that. So my song is roughly 30 seconds. go. So now to export, since we have something in our arrangement, I'm just going to make sure that um, that we're doing master, render track. So that means it's going to take the master volume, render start one, render length nine, that's fine. Um, and we're going to just set right now. I'm just going to do, this is a scratch recording, so I'm going to record this as an MP3. We're going to talk about waves and stuff later, but for now, this is fine. So um, I'm going to record this to a desktop. We'll just call this Beat 1, and I'll say Save. Encoding Master. It's a very short beat. So I'm just going to show you. Now I have this Beat 1 right here and it plays. So there you guys go. I hope this was very informative and important and we will talk more about beats and things later, but this is kind of like your first uh, intro to making beats. So I hope you enjoy this. Again, my name is Jacob Ransom. This was module two, beat making.